as night fell and it's like dark outside and we're making our way up the, you know, the stairwells and the elevators and, and getting to the top of that roof with the wind and the ladders and just looking even higher at this briefcase that's like sub, su uh, suspended from these huge, I was like, are you, sh are you kidding me? I've like, and I'm looking up, like, I got to climb that. And like, it was wild, but what a ride, what an experience and what a, bad butt company I'm part of to make it freaking work. That was one of the coolest things I've got to do in WWE for sure. This is a special presentation for the Believe in Pro Wrestling Podcast. Here's Rick Uccino on the Believe Podcast Network. What is going on, you guys? Rick Uccino here. SB Nation Believe Podcast Network. I do believe there's a pretty big pay-per-view coming up this week. Excuse me, premium live event coming up this weekend. Old habits die hard. Money in the bank. Viva Las Vegas. My guest at this time has a huge, potentially career-making match this weekend inside Money in the Bank. Lacey Evans, thank you for joining me. How are you doing? I'm amazing. Las Vegas, I'm ready. How are you? I am uh, doing fantastic. Always great when I get to to catch up with somebody the caliber of yourself. And I do want to get into Money in the Bank and, and everything that's coming up this weekend. But I, I do want to start by going back uh, to February 2021, if I can, because you are in the midst of a uh, a pretty big push, a lot going on. There's the reports that, you know, big match with yourself and Charlotte Raw Women's Championship in there somewhere. And I have two little ones at home. I know what it's like to have your world turned upside down in the drop of a hat, right? Everything changed for you in February of 2021. I mean, how? what was your, your mindset like going through all that? Because that had to be a lot of craziness all wrapped up into one there. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to start with just saying that, like, fans, they think they know one thing, and then they, like, hey, do you boo boo whatever you guys want to believe or think or concoct that's great but um i'm telling you right now i've been with my husband since i was 15 years old okay we got married at 19 uh yeah. our entire lives growing up in the the crap the hellhole that we've grew up in we always wanted to do two things get the hell out and have lots of babies <laughs> i've wanted to be a mom my entire life and i have the best husband in the world so now i was in a position where i had the best job in the world and the best husband in the world but guess what we still wanted them damn babies so <laughs> i did what i thought would be best for me and my family and i planned and prepared and did what i had to do to have another baby okay now yeah. The powers that be decided that I also had what it took to be in the limelight and the main events and in an awesome, awesome career position, but I was going to have some more babies. And so that's what happened with that. And, um, and you know, and I told them uh, the powers that be within WWE, I'll come back. I'm going to come back stronger than ever. I may not have a six pack, honey. <laughs> but I'm going to work my butt off and come back, you know, hit the ground running. And that's exactly what I did. Six weeks postpartum, I pushed my baby out and came running back down, ready to rock and roll. It just was not my time to be on TV to do so. So, yeah, it was uh, it was an incredible experience, not only to be next to Ric Flair and 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 Charlotte Flair and getting. But I was having babies. OK, and if yeah. I could juggle both, there's plenty of moms out there that like stop not only their careers or also their family to choose, but I've been blessed in my life to get to choose both. So that's what I did. Fair enough. You know, and, you know, looking back on, on everything now th this far out, you know, how did you feel about getting to work with Rick? And were you kind of surprised at the strong reactions to the, uh, to the angles that uh, you guys were putting out there on uh, TV every week? I mean, I was in awe. I mean, just to think that little old Lacey Evans from the trailer park is getting thrown in the mix of Ric Flair and his daughter and all these. I mean, I mean, it, don't get me wrong. It was rough to to know that I'm I'm planning and trying to to extend my family and give my husband what he deserves. And that's that dream of being a dad, but also getting these opportunities that so many women could have fulfilled and done like that. That's hard being next to strong, hardworking women. But it's just like on that same note, I um, 
you know, I made a decision that's best for my family, but also ensured that I would come back and hit it hard. But it was one of the coolest experiences that I've ever got to have. Um, I'm still shocked that I got to be the one to do it. Same thing with Saudi Arabia. I mean, this company, it just gives you so many opportunities in life and, uh, and you just got to take the ball and, and do the best you can with it. That's all we really can do, especially as women, as you know, women that want to be moms and motivated and chase careers. It's, it's been rough, but you know, we do the best we can. So safe to assume you're, you're looking forward to, uh, whether it's a continuation or whether it's, uh, something, uh, something different from a storyline standpoint, looking forward to picking things back up with Charlotte once she's back, uh, and ready to go now that you guys are back on the same brand again. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, there's unfinished business there. Um, I didn't get my hands on her as much as I would have liked. Um, but that's, that's, see, that's, what's wild about being women in this business. You know, I went out to have a baby. She went out to, to take another man's last name and become a wife. And that's yeah. so, I'm so happy for her. Um, you know, and, and she still gets to come back. So she's fulfilling the dream of being a wife, but also she's going to come back and guess who's going to be waiting on her. <laughs> this mama right here, honey. So you're going through everything. You're, you're living the dream. You're, you're living your priority goals, but you know, you have to come back at some point and you do come back and we see a bit of a, of a character shift, uh, an evolve of, of Lacey Evans. And I think we've seen that with a lot of superstars who take a, a hiatus away. They take a chance to kind of reset themselves and reintroduce themselves. You know, what was your whole thought process on, on getting to return and, and, you know, was making a, a shift from the sassy Southern bell to uh, this character you have now, was that always kind of an idea of yours? Always. I have uh, since NXT, I have always wanted to use this platform and use this microphone to uh, show the world what they're capable of, regardless of where they come from. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. I literally came from the trailer park straight into WWE and I'm surrounded by the Charlotte flares, by the Becky Lynch's, by the Natty hearts, you know, that have, you know, so much time and, and names invested in, you know, family, family ties that just yeah. make them so strong. And, um, you know, I look around and, and there was a voice that, uh, tells me like, what are you doing here? Like you're fr like you belong. And I say, no. And I, and I relate, like there are people out there that can relate to that. And so I, you know what I did? I said, no, screw this. I, I am Lacey Evans. I am going to come in here. I'm going to stand toe to toe with these women and I'm going to win and I'm going to make it. And I am going to pave my path and be a name that will always be remembered regardless of who I am. So why not tell the story of like, you know, yeah, she was the sassy Southern belle, but she's also Lacey Evans. And she does come from this to, to show the world what they're capable of. And so when I pitched the idea of like, can I, come back like the real me and show the world like this hardworking, dedicated, motivated mother, Marine wife, woman, superstar that is just not going to give up, but also cry on TV if she has to and tell her story, which was so hard to do. Yeah. Can I do that? Can I be her? I'm still a sassy Southern belle. I could still bake a pie just as good as I could fire a <laughs> weapon, honey. I'm just, uh, I just took the high heels off and dug my boots back out. That's all. And they were 100% receptive to that then, I'm assuming. Yeah. I mean, they, they love the idea. I mean, and it's different and it, you know, um, and I'm blessed that they're letting me because, you know, addiction, speaking about addiction and depression and mental health, that's hard. And it's hard as a company to even like tiptoe around that, but they've uh, really let me just tell, tell the hell I've been through that way that the thousands and millions of people, the babies that were in my situation with addicted parents and mental health, it's digging them down in more holes than they started with when they were born. The parents that won't get off the addiction and won't get the help for the depression, they're watching this and being like, wow, the babies are saying I need to keep climbing. And the parents are saying I need to fix myself because it shows that I, I may be a superstar. I may be a beautiful, strong mother, but I am hurting. I have been through so much that it's not fair. It's not fair as a, as a daughter, as a kid to go through what I've been through and then be thrown out there in the world with Charlotte Flair and Natty Hart and looking around and questioning if I have what it takes. Why did I deserve that? So telling my story is like exciting because 
if you are a kid that's going through it, keep your head up and keep going and know that it doesn't matter where you come from. You become what you want to become. And if you're a parent that are destroying your baby's heart and their grit, stop. Get the help. It's out there. Please. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't. I wish we had, you know, an hour to to dive into that because I could talk about, you know, my own mental health issues and and dealing with imposter syndrome and and things like that until the until the cows come home. But uh, you know, we we are here to talk about uh, money in the bank this weekend. How's that for an awkward transition there? <laughs> no, uh, it's not awkward at all. It's life, baby, <laughs> and I'm winning that shit too. <laughs> uh, this will be your your first traditional money in the bank ladder match. The one that you took part in, of course, was during 2020 when everything was crazy and you were at the WWE headquarters. What do you, what do you remember most about that? Uh, what was reported to be a long day at the office in, in filming that match at the WWE headquarters. Uh, I remember being so excited to be part of this company, you know, uh, just, it just shows how incredible like life can be in the midst of a pandemic and craziness. They figured it out. And that just motivated me even more. I'm like, I'm looking around, like, how are we going to put on shows? You know, we're not allowed to have fans. How are we going to do this? Well, they figured it out. And I thought that was the coolest thing that instead of, you know, sitting down and waiting, they acted and they did something and they made the best out of that opportunity. And that's kind of like my life. And to be a part of it was really cool to see and like do. And it was such a long day. And I remember as night fell and it's like dark outside and we're making our way up the, you know, the stairwells and the elevators and, and getting to the top of that roof with the wind and the ladders and just looking even higher at this briefcase that's like su su uh, suspended from these huge, I was like, are you, sh are you kidding me? i have like, and I'm looking up, like, I got to climb that. And like, it was wild, but what a ride, what an experience and what a, bad butt company I'm part of to make it freaking work. That was one of the coolest things I've got to do in WWE for sure. And, and now again, it's the, it's the more traditional ladder match. This one's not going to be like a, a 24 hour affair. It's going to be a, what I hope is a, a really, really fun sprint uh, with seven of the most badass women in WWE. Um, this being your, your first traditional money in the bank ladder match, have you solicited any advice from anybody? I mean, where's your mindset into heading into this big matchup on Saturday night? Um, I'm, I'm kind of being a little selfish this go round because well, I should have been a champion before I left. Um, you know, I did make the decision to become a mom and give my incredible husband what he needs, but guess what? Now it's time for Lacey Evans to get what she needs. And that is that briefcase. And that is that title. I think that I, everything it takes to be a champion, um, it's way past my time. Um, and I'm going after, you know, selfishly, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I have to do, love or hate me. I'll apologize later to get that <laughs> briefcase. Um, I need it. I want it. Now, what is your mindset about after you win it? Because we have seen both ends of the spectrum when it comes to the women's money in the bank winners. It's either been Carmella who is the person, man or woman, who has held that briefcase the longest, or it's been the last several winners who have barely waited 24 hours to cash it in. Would you like to play more of that, that stalker role, mind game type role, or are you just, hey, if the best opportunity is five minutes after I win this thing, it's going to be five minutes after I win this thing? Uh, I have, I, I'm from the military, you know what I'm saying? Where we freaking, uh, we do a little recon, we look at, I mean, I'm going to wait. I'm going to see what, what's the best option. I mean, work smarter, not harder. So, you know, not if, but when I win that briefcase, um, the minute I win it, I will walk forward with a mindset of when and where, honey, when and where. Does it matter which person you cash in on? Um, I think it matters. Of course I'm on SmackDown. Um, I'd love to, you know, build the SmackDown brand and, and really try to be a part of SmackDown. And I think that if I am working with next to, or in the same vicinity as a woman with a title called the baddest woman on the planet and Lacey Evans is in that, that room, the same woman who was on Marine Corps SWAT team, the same woman who birthed the nine pound kid on my couch and turned around in six weeks and came back. And I'm standing in the same room with a woman with the title baddest woman on the planet. I think I'd like to get my hands on her because uh, I, I have to disagree with that title um, when I'm in the room. 
when I'm uh, on the planet. Ronda Does that Rousey. make sense, Rick? Yeah, Do you yeah. understand that? I, I read you loud and all clear. Right. I hear you. I'm all for it. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Good luck moving forward and look out Ronda Rousey. <laughs> Thank you.